Good morning, Singapore, and welcome to The Big Show and The Big Show TV. Our guest for today is award-winning psychologist from the therapy room, Dr. Geraldine Tan. Good morning, Jerry. Good morning. Good morning, Good morning, Good morning Dr. Morning, Jerry. Jerry. How was your long weekend? <laughs> It was uh, interesting, but I got to rest a little bit and I didn't want to wake up this morning. <laughs> ah, you and us the same. You should have given us a call. We would have given you the day off. That's right. We have the power to do that, you know. <laughs> no, I would still come on. I will just either do it from uh, office or, or, or home, right? Or from home. Oh, <laughs> so I miss all of you. Oh, oh. Well, it looks like you decided to go into the office today. <laughs> yep. And it's bright today. Oh, my God. Yeah. <laughs> well, it is a work day for you, isn't it? It is. It is. It is. Mm, I was just okay. kidding when I said I, could, I didn't want to come. <laughs> and, I mean, for the Kiss 92 fans who are just getting to know Dr. Geraldine Tan, we've been with uh, Jerry now for, you know, a couple of years mm-hmm. or more. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And Jerry is the most committed one of the most committed persons uh, that we know. Very true. You know, in Very fact, true. sometimes um, she would go for a holiday and still insist. You know, on, on being, not missing up yeah. on Dr. the show. Dr. Thank Dr. you very Dr. much, Jerry. Dr. Jerry's done it from everywhere. She's done it from Phuket. She's done it from like outside. Japan. She's done it from a car. She's done it from a cafe. <laughs> oh, yeah. Somehow you yeah, put yeah, that yeah, way. Yeah, it doesn't sound right. No, 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 Dr. Okay. Jerry has done it everywhere. Oh. <laughs> She's done it from the from a car, car, from that's, from that's, cafe. That's only if you have a mind that thinks yeah. like Jerry, that, so. everyone was thinking that. Yeah, you know, nobody was after thinking what she that. Said. Glenn, not See? everybody has woken up, you know. Yes. That's, that's up. Good, no. good. Which means then we can start talking talking about what we're supposed to be talking about today. <laughs> which is uh, learning Disabled. disorders. Learning, Sorry, learning, disorders. Um, learning disorders. Learning disorders. Learning disorders. Learning, this dis- first... oh, learning disorders, learning... yes. Yes, yes, yes. Because this year is the first year that many of the, the children or the students do not have uh, mid-year exams yes. so they were wow. announcing it for <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah we go yay but many parents are still very very worried and um, schools also have the non-weighted assessment or weighted assessment to track the students mm. so we still have some way to test the students so why are parents worried um will they be able to do the year-end examinations you know what does that mean uh will my my child slack off for the rest of the year so there are different sort of worries that the parents have but i think more than that um the the uh, the removal of one of the major examinations in the year provides us with more um ability to help the child and that's what I wanted to capitalize on for the right. children mm, to have opportunities. Okay, let's continue to talk to Jerry on the Big Show TV. It is Tuesday, the 2nd of May. Positive thing, the then. media exam is always seen as what? like a, a gauge, you it's know? A it's gauge. like, oh, okay, is the yes. kid ready for the final yeah. exam? Yeah, you know? but Dr. If Dr. Jerry not, says six months. it's the same thing. You've got weighted ex- assessments which almost act like the same yeah. thing, isn't it? It's yeah. just name something but else. But the parents, I don't think the parents understand the weighted assessment. They'll get to know it, they'll I'm have sure. To get they'll get to, to know it. They'll have to get to know it. Yeah. But Jerry, when yeah. we talk learning disorders, what mm. are they really? Learning disorders are really how the brain acquires information, very, very simply put, right? Because it, all the jargon and everything, many people don't understand. So I often explain it this way because our brain learns or picks up information. Now, for those with learning disorders, they find it difficult to acquire to retain information and make sense of information. And it can come in various forms. It can come in terms of the reading disability, um, the, uh, uh, what, what do you call it, speech. So when they, they um, speak, it's difficult for them. Writing may be difficult for them. Calculation may be difficult for them. Um, reasoning, organization may be difficult for them. So it can fall into various categories. Even attention, mm. right? Attention is also another area. So, but 
some of these um, acquisition of knowledge may also affect attention. All right. So that sure. yeah. Mm. Is is dyslexia a, a learning disorder? It is called a specific learning disorder, SLD. Oh. So it falls under the umbrella of specific learning disorder so it's not a language impairment but it can affect your reading mm. it can affect your writing right okay. so okay. there's this, yeah so there's dyslexia there's dyspraxia which is more mortal there's a uh, dyscalculia where they have a lot of issues with their arithmetic uh, or mathematics, um, the central auditory processing disorder, attention deficit disorder, wow. <laughs> many, many different disorders, yes. Do there seem to be more disorders now as compared to, say, 30 years ago? I mean, is there an increase in disorders in children? There's no increase in disorders, but because we are now more aware of the fact that disorders exist and we have categorized them into so many various mm. kind of disorders that suddenly everybody has a label of sorts. Oh, so right. it's very strange. Because you can yeah. now identify an issue. Yeah. Unlike before. Yes. before yeah. You know? Yes. But that's in that yes. side of sort of like you know, you've put a label on almost at you say you say a lot of kids now seem to have a label would that not hinder them through school because now they've been labeled as such i want to put it out there because i get asked this all the time if my child has dyslexia does he need he or she need to go to a special school mm. if my child has adhd does do, do they need to have special education the answer is no, they can still remain in the mainstream education. And the schools now, um, there are many schools that are really on the ball. They have uh, uh, allied educators, they have um, the learning support to help the students through. But, but not all schools, right? Um, we are pushing for all schools. I mean, the ministry is pushing for right. all schools and we hope. Um, that, you know, or most schools will have it. And actually, I do think that many schools do have learning support. Okay. Mm. okay. I think it will happen. It will happen. I mean, yeah. if they can do away with the media exams, uh, anything is possible. I mean, now. it needs to go across the board because otherwise then children will be picking schools based on mm. them having allied support and stuff like that, you know, for, for the mm. kids. Yeah. Mm. Hey, you were mentioning mm. a, dyspra a dyspraxia just now, which is a motoring yeah. uh, um, thing. Motor, motor, right? motor problem. Yes. Yes. So, uh, give us an example of, of that. So, dyspraxia, they are very uncoordinated. They also have, uh, so it, it will manifest as learning issue, but they're very uncoordinated or um, they have poor organizational skills, also poor social skills. They probably um, try to make friends, but because they're so uncoordinated, you know, writing is tough for them. Uh, even if they want to reach out and tap a friend, they may hit too hard or they miss a friend, oh. you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow. Okay, so so if I was a kid, like, I would found it very hard to do choreographed moves and dancing like that, I'd have dyspraxia? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, so I had dyspraxia. Oh, yeah. <laughs> So, I, I mean, I'm just, I'm just putting yeah, I'm just putting a label on myself I, because you know I, we used to do dance school dances yeah. and stuff like that. But then like you that. were sociable. She says uh, people with dyspraxia uh, is unsociable. Yeah. They have social issues. So they have. Right. have yeah. So I'm like bordering yeah. on. You know, she never every, had social issues. No, no never. No, 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 always no, going out no. with a lot of friends mm. and boys. I know. Oh. I still have dyspraxia <laughs> for sure. Yeah, he can't dance for nuts. I can't dance to save my life. But Prashant. Uh, 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 Jerry has come up and said, uh, yes. learning disabilities are not the same as intellectual disabilities. It, okay, very, very good question. Thank you for highlighting that. So it doesn't mean that you have learning, if you have learning disorder, your IQ is affected. Many of my young um, children or students or even adults, so adults can actually have learning disabilities or learning okay, disorders. We go they, on air, we talk uh, about this. I'll ask we you this question on air, Jerry. <laughs> okay.
okay. <laughs> okay. Okay, because we've got 11 seconds only. I reckon you need okay. more time. Yeah. Okay. Here we okay. go. Okay. Yes. I talk too much. No. 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 FD yeah. talks too much. <laughs> yes, that's true. Yeah. Here we go. <laughs> Welcome back to The Big Show and The Big Show TV. It's Glenn Angel and The Flying Dutchman. And we have our guest for today, Dr. Geraldine Tan from The Therapy Room. Good morning, Jerry. Good morning. So, Jerry, Prashan just come onto our Facebook page and, and said this. Learning disabilities are not the same as intellectual dis- disabilities. Yes, exactly. no. Exactly. So, they are, they're not the same. And I'm very, very glad Prashan brought it up because many of the uh, people, students, adults with learning disabilities, they can be very intelligent. So, the IQ is not affected. So, a lot of people are very worried that, oh, if I have a learning disorder, it means that I'm stupid or I'm dumb. Yes, before they are diagnosed, they are um, labeled as lazy, procrastinating, not working hard enough, not putting in effort. But when we test them, we realize that their IQ really is not affected at all. And many um, CEOs or people in uh, very successful positions can have ADHD, dyslexia, and whole really successful careers. Okay. So, how, so what is the first step for a parent who spots something might be, you know, that child might be finding some efforts to to make to make uh, their day go by? You know, a lot of challenges that they may face. What do the parents then do? How can they help? So you check whether the child is having the same difficulty on all the different. Uh, environments. So if it's at home, in school, so there is consistency because sometimes they um, struggle in school but they don't struggle at home or they struggle at home but they don't struggle in school. It could indicate something else. So the teacher typically would be the one highlighting because the teacher has a larger volume of students to do that, uh, com- not comparison, but to uh, notice that there is something wrong or the learning may not be as fast. So they would alert the parents. So the parents can then bring to a psychologist for testing or an assessment. So an assessment to be typically comprise of a few components. One would be the interview section with the parents because we need to find out the background. Mm. Then we need to determine the type of tests to be conducted. Then we do the test and then we get the results and do the feedback. So it's a process. Mm. And this is the same whether it's child or adult. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so for the um, adult, also very similar. However, some of the adults may not have the bandwidth or the time. So sometimes they do screen us. Okay. Okay. So, I mean, in your opinion, um, I mean, are you, are you getting more of, of such cases? Uh, um, you know, children with, with learning uh, uh Disorders. Disorders. Disorders, yeah. Well, we do have a fair share because our portfolio is actually divided into the children and adults. But across board, there are more parents that are aware, there are more educators that are more aware of the different learning disorders. So I'm really, really grateful for like tutors who are in really close proximity with the children and are teaching them and realize, hey, actually, I think the child has an issue and courageously tells the parents that, um, you know, your child is not learning or uh, optimizing his learning because he may have a learning disorder. So we do have tutors pushing them forward. How varied is the spectrum? I'm sure it starts from extremely mild to really, really uh, serious and more challenging? How varied is it? Usually we get those that already the the child is struggling in some way or another. If it's small and it's not, you know, really uh, uncomfortable for the student, they still can manage. You would have gone through life quite easily. 
mm-hmm. um, you know, putting in some ways to help yourself, some coping mechanisms to help yourself. So all of us would learn and adapt anyways. But these would be the, the children or the adults that are actually struggling. But back in the day, we were just called not focused. Yeah, we exactly. Were not you know, focused. we're like, we're like you're lazy. Say, yeah. Your child is lazy. Your yes. child can do so much yes. better. You know, they've yes. they've got so much potential, yes. but they don't want to do the work. They're not focused. I mean, then we we all had disorders, right? Yeah, exactly. I'm sure we did. Mm-hmm. I yeah, think so. I think which, is, which is why I'm saying, assess me, lah. Yeah. <laughs> you, you you have spent years trying to get Dr. I Jerry mean, to assess you. It's just an assessment, but not a session. <laughs> Jerry. On our Facebook page again, Ashley has come out and said, learning disorders, can yes. they be overcome through training or conditioning? Um, I'm not sure what training and conditioning uh, she means, but uh, we do manage the disorders, hmm. which means that it, it cannot go away. It's not like a cough and cold that goes mm. away. But we can train it, you know. So if you talk about training, uh, if someone has dysgraphia, can they train their handwriting? Can they train their motor skills? They can train, but we call it more management. So it doesn't disappear. Mm. So you're saying it can be fixed to a certain extent, like managed. Not so much fixed, but yes. managed. It will always yes, be there. Yes, it can be managed to a certain extent. It will still pop out, you know, every now and then in various ways. But more or less, it will be dealt with and you know what to do with it, which is important. Is it hard to manage it? I mean, is it something I, that takes a lot of focus and, and, you know, concentration? I think the very first step, the most difficult step is recognizing that, you know, one has an issue. No, I, have no, I, have no, I have no trouble recognizing that. I have an issue. <laughs> he has really. many issues. I do, yes. I think I have many issues. Not focused. You know, it's so hard oh, for me to absorb yeah. knowledge. Yeah, it's a miracle I'm, I'm where yeah, I am today. It, it is a miracle, yes. Every day that you wake up. Must be my mom's, my mom's daily prayers, I think. <laughs> she claims credit every single time. You know how hard I prayed for you. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, oh, my son. Yes. <laughs> this is why every time he goes over, his mother's perspiring. Um, oh, no. 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 <laughs> All the prayer. Uh, Dr. Jerry, treating a child, another question on our Facebook, treating a child and treating an adult, same treatment? Hmm. Assuming uh, the condition is the same? Yeah, slightly different. I mean, with the child, it's more academic management. Uh, for the adult, the the adult would have different coping mechanisms already, and the environment is different. So we work with the adult slightly differently in terms of organizational skills, or you know, um, the the uh, awareness of where the disorder might affect him or her. Mm, mm. So you were talking mm. about uh, motor skills like writing and stuff like that. What the, the, the last the last disorder that you mentioned a uh, dis something dysgraphia. I can't... Dysgraphia. dysgraphia. Yeah, dysgraphia. So what is that again? Writing. Also, it affects the writing, the drawing. You know, so the the whole fine motor skills. So mm. it's just like really messy handwriting. Is that what it is? Uh, it's more than that. It's the ability to 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 draw or write um, efficiently, yeah, and to organize the different uh, parts of it. Right. Okay. Because mm. I'm I'm just thinking, not everyone can draw, right? That doesn't mean that they have a disorder. Oh, no, 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 no. Of course, of course not. Yeah. Okay. All right. So neatly. To do with draw. Yeah. How about the yeah. ability to actually hold on to the pencil or the pen? Some people after after <laughs> they write, right, and then they feel tired. You I feel know, very tired. quickly. I feel tired very quickly now because we don't use pens. Yeah, but even back write, in the day, you know? I mean, that, when I used to have to write, yeah. you know, mm. during exams yeah. and all that, yeah. I would, I would find it like, you know, it's it's so it's so it's, tiring. You it's know? a it's mm. a it, for most people, it's a problem with your wrist. So is that oh, a thing in the head Michelle or has or, it as well. Dr. Jerry? So 
many of these uh, learning disorders, we don't operate alone. So we have speech therapists to come in and help the student. We have the occupational therapist to help with the motoric skills. So they will go through another battery of tests with these specialists and they would um, have uh, different programs for them to help them with. Interesting. I see. Uh, mm. We've got another comment on our, our Facebook page that says some schools actually provide psychological assessments and then go on to provide learning support for that child. Oh, right. Okay. Which I okay. think is great. Okay. That's, that's mm-hmm. good. You know, I, I just think that for, for kids, right, at that young age, if you tell them or if they find out that they have this issue or that issue, you know, it'll... Um, uh, It'll hinder them, hold them back. It'll give them an excuse. Mm. I knew you were going to say that. Okay, Mm. so many times when we do the testing, right, we uh, parents will say, should I share it with my child? So then I would ask the parent, what makes you ask this question? And exactly like what Glenn says, I'm afraid that my child will use it as an excuse. Mm. So how we position it to the students or the children is that we help to find out what's going on so that you can learn better and learn differently and make your school a more pleasant experience and not use it as an excuse. Of course, ultimately, if they do use it as an excuse, we cannot help it. But okay. oftentimes, when we do catch them, we say, nope, it's not an excuse. You just have to work hard. <laughs> oh, okay, hold on. Okay. We'll go back on air. Stand by. Welcome back to The Big Show and The Big Show TV. Our guest for this morning is from the therapy room. She is Dr. Geraldine Time. You know, Jerry, we were just talking about how um, this can be used as an excuse by some kids. Mm. Or parents. Mm. Or parents. Yeah. Mm. Have you ever seen it where, where you have a situation where this then develops a complex in the child? In what sense? Uh, uh, impurity you know, complex? Yeah, or? like, a, you know, I, I, I'm like, I've got dyslexia that, you know, I'm... I'm, I'm crippled that I'm way. I'm crippled yeah, that way. In learning. Mm-hmm. If it is the case, okay, I, I've not seen, I mean, I if we do hear it, we work with it it would have already affected the self-esteem for some of the students or some Mm. of the adults. Mm. So we work on that. Um, But we would not... um, we, we would not allow it to develop to become this uh, uh, inferiority complex, complex just yeah. because we've diagnosed you with yeah. a disorder. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. But you did say something interesting earlier. You said you cannot use that as an excuse. You just have to work harder. So that's the kind yeah. of mindset that people have to have, whether you're an adult or a child who's been uh, diagnosed with some sort of disorder, that you just have to work yeah. harder than the rest. I will put it this way, although I say work harder, we have to work harder not because you know you have to uh, because you have to put in more effort mm. um, that you cannot use the average or the um, every person sort of way to do the the same task. So if everybody is using this way or uh, one way or uh, way whatever way to to do one task you have to find a different way to do it that's why it requires more effort so you just find your own unique uh formula of doing things then they are very creative so many of them are amazing and very creative i think i was looking at the the um comments on facebook and someone actually highlighted Lee Kuan Yu also has dyslexia yes yes all right okay yeah, yes. and he is, uh, you know, a really intelligent person. He can talk yeah. for hours without mm. a script. I'm yeah. sure he didn't see a psychologist growing up. He just, you know, no. he just he worked, worked it, it out for himself, right? He worked through, through it. Through it. Yeah. So, so you think children are more problematic these days? Huh? <laughs> Poor parents, are really, really. Yeah, no, I see I think where so. Glenn's coming But some from. parents choose to just uh, leave them alone and, and you know, let them, find let their let own them way. just get over it. Mm. I think it's tough. As one parent uh, put it, and I think I've said it, you know, in some of my talks and and maybe in a couple of years ago when I was talking about dyslexia, um, this set of parents brought the child to me. And as I was giving the feedback, the father started to cry. 
like, you know, the mom and dad were seated opposite me and the dad started to tear. He said, oh my gosh, all my life, I thought I was stupid and I had to work very, very hard. I can't even read a piece of email and not understand that email. So I always thought I was stupid. And mind you, he's in a very high position, but he, he felt so beaten by his disorder and he had no name for it until he saw it in his child, sent the child for testing. And he then identified that, oh my God, I have dyslexia too. Oh, and yes, wow. dyslexia can run in the family. Wow, yeah. okay, right. okay, wow. okay, mm -hmm. okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, Jerry, thank you very much for joining us today. Any no last words? Worries. Yes, let's go. I, I can't. Uh, okay, it's a French pronunciation, so I don't know if I'm doing it right. You know the author that writes um, The Little Prince? And yes. Yes. D. Exuberi? I think so. I'm not sure. His name's so sorry. You got it right. Okay. And he says, Perfection is finally attained not when there is no longer anything to add, but when there is no longer anything to take away. So nice. I'm going to leave everything, every, everyone with that. Okay. Thank you very much, Jerry. We look forward I'll to seeing see you next week. week. Bye. Bye-bye.